Good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever time it is um, you tuning in to this broadcast. Thank you so much, all of those who are tuned in. Um, let's pray. Let's pray. Um, Father, we, we invite you in, God. We just... We love you. We thank you. We ask that your name be magnified. We pray that you will work in and through this Sunday school lesson. Pray that you will pull someone from the pit of despair. Someone who's hopeless would find hope in you. Somebody who's weary would find strength. Somebody who's lost would be found. Somebody who's already joyful, Lord, that you would just spark a greater flame in them. Bless us to set our minds and hearts on Christ. Lord, we thank you. We love you. Yes, we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you again. Thank everyone for tuning in today to our broadcast. This is uh, Frederick Robinson. I'm the youth pastor of the Liberty Missionary Baptist Church where the Reverend Dr. Clyde May Jr. is the pastor. We certainly thank God first and foremost for our being here today to my pastor, to my Liberty family, to my wife, April, to my daughters, Carly and Kaylee, um, to all of those who support this broadcast, to my partner in these Sunday School Reviews, Sakoni Prince, who comes on every other week as I've encouraged everyone, uh, do yourself a treat and make sure you go to our Liberty page on Facebook so you can see, um, or on YouTube where you can see and hear Sakoni Prince do yourself a treat. Pray you're doing well, Sakoni. God bless you and the family. My encouragement to you is to keep going in the strength of God. Amen. Amen. I listen today, Unit 3. Psalms of Thanksgiving and Praise um, title today is uh, Gratitude Attitude. This is Lesson 12, date November 17th, 2024, printed passage Psalm 100, 1 through 5. Our key verse says this, it says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him. And bless his name. Psalms 100 verse number 4. Our lesson aim says as a result of experience in this lesson. You should be able to do the following. Validate the psalmist's reason for offering grateful praise. Number two. Personalize God's care for you based on his acts of faithfulness in Israel's salvation history. Number three. In interpret a song or hymn of thanksgiving that celebrates God's faithfulness amen um, our introduction says Psalms 100 beckons us to individual and corporate worship a joyful celebration where we express our gratitude and delight for God's goodness through exuberant singing and praise by harmonizing our voices in worship we amplify God's name by a unified body and express our intimate relationship with the Creator. The state of our hearts is essential in worship and while outward forms such as singing or liturgy are significant, true worship begins from within and the corporate gathering amplifies it. I think that's a good stopping point. True worship begins from within and the corporate gathering, when we come together, um, amplifies it. The first section says the invitation to worship. Psalm 100, 1 through 4. And this is what it reads. Verse 1, the first stanza says, Make, make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is 
God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Amen. Be thankful unto him. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Amen. Amen. It says Psalm 100 is, is a truly inspiring passage that invites us to worship God with all our hearts and express our gratitude for his goodness. This passage calls for us to lift our voices in joyful praise and serve God with gladness, reminding us that our worship should be both inward and outward. In verse 1, we are commanded to shout joyfully to the Lord and invite the whole earth to unite in worship. This reminds us that our worship should not be limited to ourselves, but should extend to all of God's creation. Verse 2 calls us to a joyful service and a hearty attitude, reminding us, listen, that our worship should not just be about singing, but also about serving others and having a positive outlook on life. Verse 3 acknowledges God's sovereignty and our dependence on him. The imagery of sheep remind us of our need for guidance, care, and protection. Knowing that God is always watching over us brings us comfort and peace. Lastly, verse 4 encourages us to approach God's presence with gratitude and praise. This reminds us that we should always be thankful for God. We should always be thankful for God's blessings and constantly give him the praise and honor he deserves. It is a powerful reminder to worship that worship is not just a duty to fulfill, but rather a privilege to embrace. Hallelujah. It reminds us that our worship should be characterized by joy, gratitude, and service to others. When we worship God in this way, we can experience his presence and blessings in our lives like never before. You know, one thing that I, I when I was reading is something that jumped out when it talked about how we should not just worship God by singing, but also by serving others and having a positive outlook on life. And it may... This question, how is your outlook on life from day to day? Like when you get up in the morning, are you excited about life? Or are you grateful? Um, are you in a place where, where, where you just love the Lord? And, and God is at the center of your heart. This psalmist started out by saying, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. It says, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. I think that um, we do the world a disservice, the loss of disservice when we walk around uh, as Pastor May say, like we've been baptized in vinegar. Um, when you know your name is written down in heaven, you know you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You've been accepted in the beloved. God chose you in Christ before the foundation of the world. He's loved us with an everlasting love and nothing can separate us from his love he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. In other words, we have a reason to shout. And we do something that God does not tell us to do in his word. And that is, we focus on our imperfections. Somebody listening to me today, 
the enemy constantly gets you down because you're focusing on you. When God asked us to set our affections on things above, let me set our minds on things above, not on things on the earth. One of the reasons that the psalmist was so fired up is that he was focused on the Lord. Listen at him. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Count that one, two, three. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven times in four verses. Now I haven't even got to the fifth yet. He made a reference to his God. That tells me that we shouldn't go far at all in our speech or our actions without being thankful. As we talk about a gratitude attitude, and I'm going to tell you this, gratitude is an attitude. It's a mindset. You don't have to be grateful. God doesn't force us to worship him, but it's a choice that we make. Amen. It's a choice to be grateful. Even in the worst of situations, you can be grateful. You can be thankful to God. You can magnify him. And what I've discovered is, as we move on, I've discovered that as you magnify God, as the psalmist was doing, as he began to worship God, it doesn't mean that it takes your problems away. I'm not one of those people that's going to tell you if you serve God, all your problems are going to go away. But what I can tell you is when you worship God, when you magnify God, when you set your praise toward God, when you give him the glory in spite of what you're going through, God will begin to be magnified. You'll see God in a different light. And when you really see God for who he is, no matter what your current condition is, no matter what your situation is that you're facing, it begins to shrink and God begins to grow. Not that you can make him any bigger, but he's just magnified in your life. Amen. God never changes size, but he can change size in your sight when you begin to magnify him. And that what I've also discovered is one of the greatest times to praise God is when you don't feel like it. Because feelings don't have nothing to do with what we owe God. And sometimes feelings can be our worst enemy. Push past your feelings and give God praise. Right there where you are. Praise him in the storm. In the rain, because then you know it's real. Anybody can praise God when he's blessing you with new houses and cars and jobs and when God have opened doors for you and when God have done all these great things. But what about when you're sick? What about when you're sick and tired? What about when your husband and wife acting crazy? What about when your children have lost their mind? What about when the enemies are coming up against you? What about when you get bad reports from the doctor? Can you still... Praise God in the storms of life. 
Gratitude is an attitude. And God have been good to us. Can we lift a joyful praise to God in the midst of challenging times? Was the question. And I say yes if you believe eight, Romans 8.28. God causes all things to work together for good. For those who love him. And are called according to his purpose. Amen. Last section says the motivation for worship. For the Lord he is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations his promises are reliable and everlasting and we can build our lives on this unshakable foundation despite the shifts and changes of human culture and history God's faithfulness remains the same God's character transcends time Offering hope and comfort to every generation. For the Lord is good. Not was good. Not will be good. The Lord is good. That's our motivation to worship. The Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. God's mercy never runs out. Amen. God's mercy never runs out. God has been dealing with me. Shaking me to the reality. I'm never going to leave you. That one thought is enough to set you on fire for the Lord. Whew. I'm, I will never. Somebody better catch that this morning. God said, I will never leave you. So you know if you feeling like God have walked out on you. It didn't come from him because his promise, if you're in Christ, is I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake. His mercy is everlasting. And then finally, his truth endureth to all generations. I was thinking about this on yesterday. I said, when, when we are dead and gone, this generation is dead and gone. And our children are still alive. His truth will still be going forward. Somebody will still be preaching his word. Somebody will still be singing his praise. Somebody will still be carrying the gospel. Somebody will still be evangelizing. Somebody will still be witnessing this truth that men have tried to destroy. Whole generations have tried to burn Bibles and wipe out the word of God. I heard a story about... Um, I think it was William Tyndale, last name Tyndale, who made, who, who would actually build the Bibles and put them together. Somebody wanted to get rid of them, so they asked someone to go down and ask it to purchase all the Bibles from him and give him whatever he wanted to pay for all the Bibles so they could burn the Bibles up and destroy them. And they went down and made this agreement. And he gave them all the Bibles that he had. And they gave him this great sum of money. And, and they took the Bibles and destroyed them. But what they did not know is that Tyndale took the money that they gave them and bought three times and created three times more Bibles than what they had before they paid him. Amen. God will cause your enemies to bless you. Amen. When you in line with God, you can't stop his word. Amen. We have a reason. A motivation. As I look back over my life, I don't have anything to complain about. Because if truth be too, told, God's been good to me. I know he's been good to you too. I know he's been good. There's no way he haven't been good because the Lord is good. And his word can't lie. To the atheist, he's been good. To the agnostic, he's been good. To all of his creation. I close with this. It says, the main idea of Psalm 100 is to express gratitude. The psalmist reminds us that God is good. His love is unfailing. His faithfulness endures forever. 
being thankful is not just a one-time event, but a way of life. We are encouraged to approach God with gratitude regularly. It is essential to, to take a moment each day to thank God for the blessings in our lives, no matter how big or small. You ought to thank him right now. You ought to, I'm talking about not head, open up your mouth. I dare you to open up your mouth and thank God <laughs> that he's brought you this far in 2024. All the days that we've been alive, traveling, the dangers, the bad news on the news, and God have kept you. Not just you, but he kept your family. You can't tell me we don't have a reason to think. He said, and we can cultivate a positive and grateful mindset by making thankfulness a habit. I haven't mastered that. You haven't either. But I'm learning just to thank God and to keep on moving. All the time. All, listen, I've wasted, listen, I've wasted years of my life worrying about things that have never happened. Some of them never will. And I can't get that time back. But what I can do is not dwell on what I've wasted, but use what I got left. Use what you got left in service to God. And when you serve him, serve him with gladness. Whatever he allow you to do, do it with a gratitude attitude that he pulled you out of sin and shame. Somebody listening to me today, you may not know the Lord. You may not have ever really trusted God. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. God will save you right now. Sign your name in heaven. Seal you with his Holy Spirit. Feel you, then seal you. And keep you for the rest of your life. Trust him today. Somebody lost in sin today. Trust him. Call on his name. He'll save you right now. Call on the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for guiding us through our study of your holy word. May the words we have pondered continue to shape our lives drawing us closer to you with praise and thanksgiving all the more. Lord, touch every listener today. I pray that a holy fire would sweep through these airwaves and set every person under the sound of my voice on fire for you, including me, and let it burn, Lord. Let it burn. This world needs you. Men and women are dying without Christ, lost in their sin. And Lord, we know the truth. We have the only hope that this world can grasp and it will last forever. Help us to be about your business. Bless us to love the person you put in front of us. Forgive us for our sins and help us to ever forever praise your name. I ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. A gratitude attitude. I pray y'all have a blessed day. I pray you've been encouraged. No matter what you're going through, give God the praise. Tell him thank you. I close with this final verse. The Bible says, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing in everything. 
give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Have a blessed day. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.